Uh, so the hick from French Lick. He proudly dubbed himself the hick from French Lick. Who'd ever thought that that little blonde-headed boy would go on and be what he was? When you got here, out of Indiana State, there's a story about when it dawned on you that you could be more than just a very good player, but you could be somebody who really mattered in the history of this league. Bird is making all the passes. How about that? Oh, he's amazing. Quickly ahead to Bird. Behind the back move. Dumps it to Parrish. What a pass by Larry. The rebound to Bird. Look at that, Look at that pass. Oh, oh what, a what a show. What a great play. Oh. You don't play for the Boston Celtics, you never play professional basketball. This is what basketball is all about. And now there's a steal by Bird. Underneath the DJ, lays it in. What a play by Bird. When I played, Larry Bird was the only one I feared. A lot of black guys always ask me, could Larry Bird really play that good? I said, man, Larry Bird was so good, it's, it's frightening. You are watching what greatness is all about. Bird! Yeah! Double team at Bird, Larry, Fink, fall away. It's the murder! All right! He was a cold-blooded killer. If you put all of us in a room, you know, Magic, Jordan, myself, and Bird, Bird probably be the guy who walks out of the room at the end of the day. Bird. Larry Bird. Follows his own shot. To Vincent, to Bird. Over the back door! Oh! oh, I don't believe it. He was playing chess and everybody else was playing checkers. He was three moves ahead of everybody else. And you never know what he was going to do, but you knew it was going to be something special. Bird steals it. You can see it coming and look at the pass to McHale. Isn't that beautiful? He would do a head fake or he would do this and the guy would turn and he would just fake the crap out of guys after watching him play i said somebody went into a cave in french lick indiana found this cake of ice started chipping away and i popped this prehistoric old-time basketball player he played like the old timers play red hour box selected him with the sixth pick in the nba draft I can remember somebody telling me I was just drafted by the Boston Celtics and I was saying, what are you talking about? 
I had absolutely no clue that they even had a draft that day. I said to Red, I said, Red, why would you draft this guy, Bird, and you know he's not going to play for this season? 1978, Red drafted Indiana State junior Larry Bird, even though Bird had decided to stay in school for his senior year. It was odd that they drafted a player that they couldn't have right away, and it was more frustration for the fans to have to wait a year. And there were many who wondered whether Bird would be worth the wait. I came in uh, to the league, you know, I, I played a, a, a small town, I, I did very well, and everybody always said, you didn't play against anybody. I went to Indiana State, uh, same thing. White guy, Indiana State, can't jump, can't run. He was not fast, he was not quick. I was Larry Bird's biggest skeptic. The first time I saw Larry Bird was actually in a magazine. Saw his stats, blown away by his stats. But let's see if he can really do it against us. But in his senior year, Bird began to convince the doubters. He would single-handedly lead the unknown Sycamores to the NCAA Finals. Once people saw him play, there were no doubts. We were watching Indiana State games here in Boston. Local TV made sure that they got their games because the Celtics were so bad. And he began to embody and represent hope. We came down a couple times. I go behind my back, no look to him. He no look back to me. And I'm laying it up. I'm saying, oh, man. Here's that last play. Magic Johnson going in, drops off the bird. Bird puts it back off inside to Johnson. Super bad. This guy got game. Winning College Player of the Year, Bird finished his career as the fifth all-time leading scorer in NCAA Division I history. He came to a game, and everybody started standing up clapping, and I'm thinking like, what in the hell is going on here? This guy didn't even play the game. They don't even know what he's about, but they just think that, you know, he's going to be the difference. The Great White Hope, what does that mean? Well, you know, it's very hard to say. But he ran away from that designation. He made it very clear, almost from day one, that he was not the great White Hope. You know, the, the great players are the black players, and they're the best. Finally, Red's vision would become reality when Bird became a Celtic. Everything's starting to fall into place. I hope you all realize this. We are Larry. Such deference meant little to black Celtics like Curtis Rowe, Sidney Wicks, and Cedric Maxwell who looked at Bird and saw not the Great White Hope, but another case of Great White Hype. One or two little moves, and look where you go. He didn't impress me no more than any white guy I've ever seen play before. I think that you would say that most black players at the time were racist, in, in the sense that we did not think that you could find a, a white guy who could play better than any black guy. So when I came in the league, there was a lot of doubters. Yeah. And, you know, with my mentality, I thought, well, I'll go in there and, and, you know, I'll just do my best to get better. I'm thinking, oh, he's slow. He can't get off a shot. He's not that strong. This is going to be a layup. Bam. Knocks down a jump shot. Okay. Maybe that was luck. It, it was blowing my mind because he's dominating Jack Givens player of the year in college basketball. Larry Bird is eating him alive. Gets the ball again. Bam, knocks down another jump shot. Now I'm thinking like, okay, hey, you know what? I'm gonna D this guy up. I'm gonna show him his life. 20 feet away, bam, 25 feet away, bam. Larry had the greatest step back I ever saw. You know, because he, he would give it to you on your left, and then he would step back mm -hmm. and let it go. And then he had, again, every time I talk about his shot, you know, it, you know, when you see a pretty ball rolling in the air. Bird now cuts free. And the rest of the fellas are sitting there going, hey, the boy man, what can you say? <laughs> I, my mind just goes so good. Damn, this white guy can play. <laughs> And, and I think what America saw in this guy was somebody who really didn't see race. He doesn't see race. He really doesn't. Southern Indiana, the home, by the way, of the modern Ku Klux Klan. But how he managed not to be affected by the cultural milieu that he grew up in is, I think, a miracle. It's, to me, it's inexplicable. When I was in the seventh and eighth grade, we always had this basketball court there that a lot of the guys that worked at the hotel would be over there, and they always let me play in their games. They were all black players. I couldn't wait to school be over because I knew 
over on the courts, the waiters from the hotel would be over there. They were black, older, and they let me play. You know, I always looked at that as I got an opportunity to play against a black man, and they treated me good. I couldn't wait to play against the best, and at that time, they were the best. Wonder when these guys are going to start playing hard, you know? Mm. So, ML, we went out to eat one on ML car told me, he goes, man, you're going to be really good in this league. And I said, really? And I said, yeah, but you guys ain't playing. He goes, oh, yeah, we're playing. He said, they're talking about it. They think you're going to be pretty good. We will see other, you know, uh, American, Caucasian, I suppose, uh, European-American. There's, yeah, there's, there's one guy in NBA history that averages okay. 24.6 rebounds and six assists for his career. And I can name Larry you uh, Superstars eventually will see more than one, Stephen A. Smith. I'm not so sure. He was a basketball genius. He'd be a step ahead. Larry wasn't quick, couldn't jump really high, but there was just some sleepless nights. Bird takes the pop. It's gone. It is gone. Bounce, Bird. Nice tip to McHale. He had a mind that was like a camera. He had the best hand eye coordination, maybe, of anybody that ever played basketball. The rebound to Bird. Look at that pass. Oh -ho! I never saw a man play a better game of basketball, ever. That's the greatest individual performance. I would love just that tape to be shown to every high school and college coach, or every pro coach now, just everybody, just say, uh, this, this, is, this is the greatest, this is how you can't play basketball better than this. You can't. Bird steals from McCray. Now they clear aside for Larry. Bates the out. This guy was going to do one thing almost every night that really spun your head around. Kale picks up Rodney McRae on a switch. Sampson guarded by Bird, but Bird doing a good job against him. Traveling called against Ralph. Bird going to the floor for it. This game is Larry Bird. Kale charged for it. He goes down. Larry Bird oh. dies for the loose ball and gets it to McHale. And you look at the numbers and it's like, eh, 29, 10, and 12, something like that. But it wasn't like he didn't shoot lights out. His PR wasn't the best of any bird performance, but like, you know, just being in the arena for that game and the way he played and how he was just everywhere on the court, like a free safety. Here he was out there with a court of black guys out there talking trash with him. Just freaking maniac for three and a half quarters. I have never seen anybody have an imprint on that game scoring less than 30 points. Bird averaged 21 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists to beat Magic for Rookie of the Year honors. Make no mistake, Magic Johnson, I will f***ing end you. To sum this up, let me ask you this. Is it fair for me to believe that even black fans, after a while, were, were perfectly willing to acknowledge that Larry Bird was the baddest white boy ever to shoot a basketball? Oh, that's easy. Okay. Oh, I that's just, easy. I mean, just, I, can tell you, I can tell you right now, I can tell you right now. I, I never saw anybody, including Michael, obviously a vastly superior individual defensive player than Larry ever was, but not that day. Larry Bird read every play, he read every, read every one of the minds of the Rockets before they made a move. Larry Bird, could, Larry Bird could walk, literally in his heyday, he could walk into any black neighborhood in America. Level finds an opening. And they'd be like, hey, that's Larry Bird. Come on over, you know, because he could ball. He could ball. And Dominique Wilkins, you know, said it best. That's a bad boy and what have you. Dominique Wilkins versus Larry Bird. That's a good one. Uh, going against a guy with a competitive edge like you've never seen. And a guy that you couldn't make mistakes against because he would find a way to hurt you. And not only that. Let's give Larry Bird profound respect. When you could play, first of all, when, when Larry Bird sat up there and said he didn't see color, I want everybody to know, 
it was truly believable in the black community. Yep. Everybody looked it up. Oh, we believe that because Larry Bird did kid. You either play or you couldn't. That don't mean nothing to me. It don't mean anything to me. It never has. I don't know why. I mean, am I doing something wrong here? He'll be jumping against Elijah Wan and giving up a few inches, to say the least. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Bird takes the three into the air. You know, and Larry Bird would give it to you, and I'm going to tell you something else. When he got into that fight with Dr. J. In a game against the 76ers in 1984. Bird's hard nose was never more visible than during a 1984 game with the 76ers when he took issue with Dr. J. Folks in the black community weren't mad at him. They respected him for it because we found out why. Bird found himself matched up against Julius Irving and dominated him. As he scored point after point, Bird kept repeating two numbers to Dr. J. The number of points Bird had and the number of points Irving had. By the end of the third quarter, those two numbers had become 42 and 6. 42 points for Bird, 6 for Irving. I was up 38 to 6. That's how I summarize it. When Dr. J yacked him, you know. <laughs> Larry was complaining to the refs, and I was complaining to the refs, and the next time down the court, it got in my face. At this point, Danny Ainge claims that Bird told Irving to retire. Why? What happened? How could the doctor, Julius Irving, resort to violence? Why would he do this? I don't want to get into the details, but um, I wasn't happy with the way things were going on. Only if you knew that Larry Bird was a world-class taunter and provocateur. And then we found out it's because Bird said, I'm going to hit this J right here. <laughs> I'm going to come right here and I'm going to put this in your face right here. I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to do that to you. And then he did it. Would you understand what happened next? I felt like he was going to hit me, you know. So my hands went up and his went up. Which led to this. Wait a minute. It's Barkley. Oh, there it is. Yeah. You know, but I, I, he's my boy. And I tell you, we went through a lot of battles together. And we, we, right. we won a lot of games. We lot, won a lot of games on his IQ and on his toughness. Bird fights Kareem. Swings the elbow. And now is killing it Larry Bird. You could never back down. Jaw to jaw. Once you do, uh, People look at you different. You had to stand up for everything you believed in, and then, and even if it's the one playing basketball, I mean, if somebody took the gloves off and wanted to go, you had to go. If you didn't, there's no use playing. Larry Bird is no hick, believe me. Larry Bird and that toughness. That dude was one tough guy. We were like, oh, that's why he hit you? Oh, well, damn, Doc, something wrong with you. You should have stopped him. That's how we were thinking about it. We like, and we know we love Julius Irving, but you couldn't take anything away from Bird. Bird was a bad somebody. Larry yes. Bird was the baddest son of a gun on the planet. Mm -hmm. He was the bad somebody. man he was a somebody. long before Aaron Rodgers yep. ever came along. He was the bad. Larry Bird was the truth. I couldn't wait to call home to tell my boys, man, this dude named Larry Bird is for real. This is the baddest white dude I've ever seen in my life. Ain't no question about that. And there no hasn't been anything like him since either. Nah, no, no, no. Dirk, now give Dirk Nowitzki some props though, because Dirk has hit a lot of big yeah. shots in his career. He just hasn't been to the finals, but twice. For my money, Larry Bird is the greatest big man in terms of shooting the ball ever. The All-Star Game is in Dallas, the first three-point contest. And he just starts looking at guys, doesn't say a word, and, and people are getting kind of nervous. And then he finally speaks and says, I'm just, just looking to see who's going to finish second. Some pure trash talking and just general bravado. And the theatrics of, of it all was made for Larry. And Larry would back up his boast by not only winning the contest, but blowing away the competition with a phenomenal shooting display. for a week now and I knew I was going to win this thing. I've been practicing. My teammates said I wasn't going to win it, but I, I came back and uh, lucked out, really. Bird would luck out again the next year, but in 1988, 
it looked like his luck had finally run out. He certainly doesn't have that normal bird rhythm going for him. Come on, Dave. Seconds remaining. He has only seven. It has to be 15. That's eight. Making nine. And ten. And eleven as we're counting. Thirteen. He's still got to drop one here quickly. Fourteen. This is a tie for the money. Yo! He knew exactly what the score was. He knew that that ball was going to win the competition for him. And it's almost like he did it in dramatic fashion just to make it more fun. He knew it when he let it go and was headed for the winner's circle. I'll take that guy and take my chances over anybody over else. Over Dirk? Over Dirk, absolutely. I take Larry Bird over Dirk Nowitzki because Dirk is a great shooter. Larry Bird was a break-your-heart shooter. That's okay, the problem how about anything Nowitzki. like him born and raised in the USA? No. No. There's Thank only you. one Larry Bird. That's right. game I just remember so vividly they announced Larry Bird's name and somebody from one of the top tiers threw out a, uh, a, a dove and it flew around the building. Larry Bird has it. They have gotten the ball into his hands. Larry Bird gets the ball and starts making his move and gets the defense moving. He makes something good happen. <laughs> yes, it <is. laughs> Oh, that was incredible. Yes, it flew across the garden and the place erupted. That was unbelievable. This was the really uh, the unleashing of Larry Bird. And Bird would pay immediate dividends. No one was questioning Red's move any longer. In Larry Bird, he had found all the qualities of Celtic greatness, embodied in one player, a player who combined talent with tenacity. That fierceness. Leadership, big game, clutch shooting. I think Larry was the, was the mystique. I think Larry was the, the confidence. The parquet floor and the championship banners didn't mean anything if Larry Bird wasn't on the court with us. he dive on the floor. he do whatever it takes. He was the most self-motivated player I ever saw. Bird had revitalized not only the franchise, but also its fans. Just lifting a whole franchise that was a storied franchise back to greatness. Two seconds on the shot clock. Bird wants a three on it. Larry Bird is one of the greatest players of all time, there's no doubt about it. But not only was he an amazing player, he was an incredible trash talker. And according to many previous NBA legends that played against Larry Bird, he was the greatest trash talker of all time. Who is uh, the best crap talker of all time? Larry Bird. You reckon? Larry Bird was the best of all time. You, you probably know this, Dan, but Larry Bird was one of the biggest trash talkers in basketball. And a lot of people say, really? You know, they thought it was Reggie or Charles. Larry Bird talked more trash on the basketball court than, than anybody I've ever played against. Bird was so self-confident that he was known to waltz up to the opponent's bench before tip-off and predict a 40-point performance for himself. Then he would drop 40 on them, which is pretty insane. You know, so he shot one, and I mean, I, I'm trying to block this shot, and he, he would just tell me, Scott, you're a little too late. So we playing him in the last, the last play. He says uh, to James Worthy, he says, you guys don't have to worry about it. I'm going to go right over there at that corner. <laughs> he said, they're going to set a screen for me. We're taking the ball out. He said, I'm going to curl right over. And he's telling us to play. 40,000 eyes on Larry Bird because they knew he was going to get the ball. And uh, we knew it. Our opponents knew it. Now it's just up to them to stop it. He's telling us to play before they even take it out. He said, I'm going to go right over to that corner, and I'm going to catch it, and I'm going to shoot it, and I'm going to tie the game or win the game, whatever the case may be. They take the ball out, and I think it was either Danny or, or, or um, DJ? the late, great DJ. Yeah. 
take the ball out the man curl right to the corner, caught the shot, <laughs> shot a three, <laughs> and game over. It. <laughs> it's like, are you effing kidding me? <laughs> there was some pretty crazy Larry Bird trash talking stories. Bird used to tell people. I remember he told me a story about Xavier McDaniel. Mm. He said, hey, X man, yeah. Hey, X, I'm going to get the ball right here. I'm going to shoot a jumper right in your face. He said, You know, I'm going to get it. And I said, I know, I'm going to be waiting. And he said, I'm going to get it right here. I'm going to shoot it right in your face. Ten seconds. Five, and Bird has the basketball. Look out. Two seconds on the clock. And then he got the ball and shot it right in his face. Yeah. And Bird says to X, I didn't mean to leave two seconds on the clock. I walked back to the little sideline like, damn. <laughs> Larry. I mean, Larry was just, and he, and he was saying in such a calm way that you didn't think it was trash talking, <laughs> but it's trash talking. You, you're not going to tell me you're going to go over there and shoot the ball in my face. That's trash talking. It was the twilight of his career. His body ravaged by injury, a back so bad his afternoons before shoot around were spent in traction. Larry Bird was the king of trash talking his man and then backing it up. For instance, he once scored 40 points and had a triple double against a young Sean Kemp. Late in the game, Kemp, who grew up in Indiana, attempted to defend a tough Larry Bird shot. Bird sunk the shot and running back up the court told Kemp, I'm the best effing player from Indiana. But night after night in 1991, Bird continued to lead the Celtics. With his running mates old and new beside him, the green faced a new upstart. Perhaps his most memorable moment came in a game against the Pacers around Christmas. Before the game, Chuck Person, known as the Rifleman, told reporters that the Rifleman is coming and he's going bird hunting. Chuck Person and the Pacers were new to the playoffs, but showed no fear. It quickly became personal between the legend and the Rifleman. Larry approached person before tip-off, saying, Hey Chuck, I have a present for you. Bird, off balance. And this first half, Bird had a knock away by Sanders. Power shuttle recovery, Bird is hurt. Bird is down, and he's hurt. And Larry Bird is headed directly to the locker room for treatment. You know, the thing about it that I love about you is that, um, see, most guys talk trash and talk stuff and can't bag it up. then waited until Person was subbed out, spotted up right next to where he was sitting, and drained a three. As the ball went in, Bird turned to Person and said, Merry effin' Christmas. Bird ahead of the field! Bird! Yes! But Mr. Bird, you know you can bag your trash talking up. Sanders at 6'6", giving away three inches to Bird, who's trying to post the ball. Through the foul, yes! And it counts! Larry Bird hit more clutch shots, you know, in pressure situations than, than any player. They told yeah. you about each and every one, right? Oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. He would call the spot. According to Jason Williams, he felt confident enough that he could check an aging Larry Bird on the court. 
It didn't start off well for the 76ers. Charles Barkley had come to the game hungover and Larry Bird realized that immediately. He knew Chuck had a big night out and Larry Bird saw this as an opportunity to trash talk his way into a win. Not only did Bird start trash talking him, but he was lighting him up on the court. Larry Bird was hitting three after three after three on Barkley and he couldn't do anything to stop it. I get there and uh, Charles Barkley comes to the game hungover. <laughs> hungover. <laughs> You know, you could smell it on him. Boy, it smells like a sailor, man. It's like possum nuts, you know? So Larry Bird goes, comes in the game. They start it, and he goes, mm, Charlie, you've been out all night, man. Right? Here, take this with you. Boom, he starts lighting it up Charles Barkley. Larry Bird doing what Larry Bird does, backs down the court after hitting in three and tells the opposition coach, hey, coach, give me somebody else. So they put in Rick Mahorn, and they look at Rick and say, <laughs> if you got a whole ass, you got to make two trips, boy. You can't check me. Why, why, why? Larry Bird just talk. Then Bird says to the coach, Coach, put somebody else on me. And so he did. And so on came Armand Gilliam. Now, as you can imagine, Larry Bird started lighting him up as well. So after Larry Bird started killing Gilliam, he struts back down the court just like Larry Bird does and says, Hey, coach, put the rookie in. You know, he tried back. He looks over at the bench and he goes, Hey, coach, put the rookie in. I was like, and yeah, put me in. Um, you better not hope you don't put me in. <laughs> and then Jimmy goes, Jay, go get him. And I go in, I go, yeah, yeah, what, what you want to do? Come on, baby, let's go. Let's get it on. And he gives me a pump fake, and I jump clear across his head. <laughs> and when I come back down, he looks at me and goes, stupid rookie, boom, and hits a three-pointer. So I'm like, oh, sh okay, that's one. He's Larry Bird. Okay, the next time, I'm just going to play him this way. I'm not going to jump. <laughs> and he's laughing. His third goes, you're not going to jump against the bird, man? Whap, hits another one. So six <laughs> points and not... 25 seconds. So I go, shit, now what do I do? So I'm caught between the fart and the shit. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm like half jumping, half now, half jumping. I look like a damn orangutan. What to do? What to do? Now I'm panicking. And he just gives me a pump fake, crosses over, hits another. He got nine points now, Ben. Post me up. Five down, he calls. They throw the ball in the post. He pump fake, goes around and dunks on me. Now I'm like, oh shit. I got dunked on by a white man who's on the end of his career. Can never Larry go home Bird. again. <laughs> it's a wrap now. From that point on, Williams not only doubted if he should be playing NBA basketball, but he contemplated suicide for a brief moment. I'm starting to think when we run back down, maybe I shouldn't play basketball. Maybe I wasn't that good. Maybe I should have <laughs> been a brick mason. You know, what the hell am I doing here? I can't go home now. If this guy scores one more bucket, it's, you know, I'm thinking suicide. I really was. I was like, what the... Larry Bird had destroyed his confidence in an instant. So the second half starts and I'm on the bench and he starts lighting up Charles Barkley again. He's lighting up Rick Mahorn. Then he's lighting up on McGillian, right? And the coach comes down to the bench. He got nobody else to put in the game. And he looks at me and I start looking into the stands with the, with the fans. <laughs> I wouldn't give no eye contact to Jimmy Lyon and the coach. And I'm like, please don't put me back in there with that white guy. Please, whatever you do. <laughs> It was the first time in my life I was ever scared to be on a, on a go into a basketball game. Larry Bird made a grown man not want to play the game he loved because it was killing him too much. Bird now cuts free. Again, it's like it's telling the story yeah, in the air. Yeah, see, mean, people don't yeah. realize how big of, Larry yeah, was either. Six ten. Yeah. He was yeah. six ten. Yeah. 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 Shooting that fade away from the court. There's nothing you can T do about it. Tell us about it, Sneak. T tell us about Larry Bird. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like you have some experience on this topic. <laughs> <laughs> tell us. Tell us. A lot of experience. <laughs> I give you a game. <laughs> I give you a game. Well, Kevin McHale scored fifty-seven one night. So Bird said, "I'm gonna break your record against Atlanta." Yeah. I'm like. <laughs> Won't get 55, not here. It's a duel. Put down your saber. Wilkins responds. It's Bird's turn. Comes up with a shot. And the Celtics lead it. Going into that game, I thought there might be a ray of sunshine because one of the bellmen told me that he had heard that Larry and a couple of his teammates may have gotten in a little bit late the night before. So I was saying, hey, maybe Larry won't have a real good night. Damn, Birds. He's heating up. Well, in New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans. Bird, the bomb. Bird, the fall away. Bird out of the left corner. The bomb is good. To say that Larry had a hot hand is uh, an understatement without question. Damn, he's going, uh. Damn. You can't give him that shot. You can't give him no shots. Giving each other. Some free chili. He got so hot in that game. 
Bird posted left, takes the jumper and hits it again. Backs in, posted up Bird, takes the jumper and hits it. It's as good an exhibition of basketball as I've ever seen. 15 remaining in the third. Bird posted left, Damn. takes the jumper and hits it again. Ooh, he's just hitting the bottom of the net. Nine, Larry Bird is just unconscious. That you talk about that patented step back. Damn. Takes it and drills it again. <laughs> he's unbelievable. <laughs> he just shoots. A lead for Bird front court. Bird shoots the jumper right side good. I'm sure to Larry, the rim seemed like it was about five feet wide. Right corner, Bird bomb, good. He was doing that step back and he switched it to his left hand three separate times in that game. You gotta start fouling him. They open the right side, Bird the follow away. He oh. drills it again. Oh. You're seeing a greater performance as you'll ever see from Larry Bird. That game was unbelievable. Just absolutely unbelievable. Dominique guarded him. Cliff guarded him. Antoine Carr guarded him. I guarded him. Uh, nothing worked. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> Leave him sleep. Hey, let him stay asleep. Sleep, yes. Dennis Johnson, a lead for Bird. They want him to. They want him to keep scoring too. Bird takes the jumper and hits it again. Bird with eight seconds. Bird on the drive. The runner. Ooh. Damn, Dominique, you getting all that? Bird with eight seconds. Bird on the drive. The runner oh. is good again. <laughs> the fall away. Oh, ooh, damn. He <laughs> gave him a fake in and a fake out. Damn. You know, it's like his eyes got this big, and I knew it was on then. I said, I knew it was on. And when, when you talk about the clutch shots, he hit 10 clutch shots. Larry Bird. Yeah, he on fire. He unconscious. He unconscious. He's unconscious. <laughs> I was going to say, that game. Yeah. you had 47 in that yes. game. Larry Bird had 34, but 20 of those wow. in the fourth quarter. So clutch is not just the final yeah. three or four seconds of a game. Bird kills you. Another defensive stop. A must here for the Hawks. Johnson gets it into Bird, and Wilkins is there. Bird comes free. You are watching what greatness is all about. And the thing is, we were sending everybody at him to slow him down. He was so hot that I think one of the shots he hit was a left-handed three. That's when you know a guy is mm, in yeah. the zone. There's Bird. Bird mm. 14 seconds. Damn, fall up. Ooh. He was scoring anywhere on the floor that Ooh. he wanted. Is this when the I mean, bench was, was giving each other five? The bench was giving each other five. He makes a jump shot, and the Atlantic players are high-fiving each other like, man, this guy's so hot. Bird has 54. There's Bird. Bird, 14 seconds. He got fouled. He hit the shot. Oh, boy. Larry Bird made about every shot you can imagine in that game. Bird with eight seconds. Bird on the drive. The runner oh. is good again. Oh, did you get in a fight with them after the game? Forget, I, forget Larry. Did well, you beat it, anybody on the I'll big this way? You're giving five. He's scoring on me. Yes. Every one of those you guys my got fined $3,000. Okay. <laughs> good. Oh. I, mean, I could not. I've wow. never seen a guy get that hot before. He called it. Uh, he said rainbow uh, trainer's lap. You know, and he faded away, hit the shot, and fell into our trainer's lap. And Bird falls into Joe O'Toole. Larry Bird. What Ooh. more can you say? Larry Bird. Larry Bird. That white boy was a bad man. They got fined $3,000, yes. right? Yes. Now, we watching the film the next day, and we, you know, we looking at everybody. Off the pick comes Bird. Bird on the drive. The floater is good. <laughs> Down low for Bird with position. He fakes it and shoots it good. <laughs> Bird out of the left corner. The bomb is good. Off the pick comes Bird for the bomb. Got it again. Off to Bird for the open 20-footer. It's good. On the left wing, Webman down low. Bird, he gets away from the steal. The layup is good. Posted up, Bird. Takes the jumper and hits it. Bird. Shoots the jumper right side. Good. Bird posted left. Takes the jumper and hits it again. Bird, who feels it and takes it. And drills it again. Bird will...
will try another jumper. Damn. Third. Bird for the bomb. Got it again. Two on one with Bird. Bird's layup is good. Bird with eight seconds. Bird on the drive. The runner oh. is good again. Here's Bird. For Bird the fall away. Tough shot and he drills it again. McHale. He stubbed his toe. Right corner. Bird bomb. Good. They open the right side. Bird the fall away. He oh. drills it again. A lead for Bird. They want him to, they want him to keep scoring too. Bird takes the jumper oh. and hits it again. There's Bird. Bird, 14 seconds, he got fouled. He hit the shot! The reason why Larry Bird got so hot in that game, in that fourth quarter, Kevin Willis and I and Bird was running down the court, and Kevin reaches across me and puts his finger in Larry Bird's chest and said, don't let this so-and-so score anymore tonight. And I looked at Kevin, uh, what you doing? Bird will try another jumper and hit it at the buzzer. A bad man. Damn. Life. Bird has 60 points. Larry Bird scored 60. Now, Fratello fined everybody $3,000, but what y'all didn't see was he was sitting down like, uh, you know, hey, 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 you should have filed Fratello $10,000. Because can he call a double T? Yeah, man, he was stroking that bitch from everywhere. Fadeaways, up and unders. Ugh, giving them everything. I can just feel it. You can sort of tell, and things were clicking right off the bat. There's Bird. Bird, 14 seconds. He got fouled. He hit the shot. Larry Bird. You know what the age old question is, Timmy? Oh, could he play in today's game, right? Because everybody now is bigger, stronger, faster, jumps higher. Is that true? Because I look at Larry Legend and I go, Larry Legend is a legend for a reason, and he can play in any era. Well, I think his game would have had to adjust to the height, size, and athleticism of the games nowadays. But think about this. He would have torched a guy like Carl Anthony Towns. These young guys with his basketball IQ. Yeah. He was a grown man. Three years of college. Oh, and before that, we might have never knew about Larry Legend. He was hauling garbage. Started off in Bloomington at IU. Didn't work out there. Goes back home. Contemplates ever playing again. The fact that he was a grown man against these 20-something-year-old kids, he would have had his way. I, look, I, as a caveat growing up, I hated Larry Bird. I was a Sixers guy and Julius Irving. So, but damn, did you respect the hell out of the guy. Because it just seemed like... Oh, he's slower than everybody else. He can't jump. And yet he'd always seem to be open, always seem to get the big rebound, and always seem to make the right pass. Yeah, I think his basketball IQ is something that goes kind of under the radar. When you think about guys that really know how to play or teams that really know how to play, you know what those teams and guys do? They win. Yep. And I think that's what Larry would have done. He would have kept on winning. The interesting thing was Larry growing up his whole life, no three-point line. Nope. Think about every court he played on. There was no three-point line. If he would have had that, sorry, Dave, mindset from the get-go. I'm going to need a shot after hearing that. He averaged 24 points a game over the course of his career. I think it would have been towards 27. Kobe was always my favorite since, yeah. since I got out. I don't like that, by the way. But but, uh, but uh, LeBron James is by far our best player in this league. We begin with the association. Longtime Indiana Pacer Reggie Miller showed loyalty to his former head coach Larry Bird on Friday. Miller played under Bird for three seasons with the Pacers, making two All Star games during that span. Now, in, a, in an appearance on the Dan Patrick Show, Miller said he would take Bird in his prime over LeBron James in a hypothetical draft. Larry Bird at his best, LeBron James at his best. Oh, my God. And do we have to put the teams too, or just individual players? If there's a draft, oh my God! You can take Bird or LeBron. Oh. So let, let's say I take Larry at this age when I think he averaged thirty, ten, and seven, something like that, and LeBron right now. So you got Larry Legend. Okay, or now LeBron. what rules? One, are we, what rules are we playing? To? We're playing today's rules. <laughs> oh, I gotta go with Larry Joe. I gotta go with Larry Joe in today's rules. You can't yeah. touch him. Yeah. And Larry, so this is 27, 28 year old Larry and 27, 28 year old LeBron, yeah. right? Or is he 30 now, right? 30. Yeah. So 30 year old Larry, 30 year old LeBron. Okay, give me give me Bird's stats at 30, Paul. At 30. Because that, that, that was an MVP season, I think. Yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, 30 points a game, nine rebounds, six assists, two steals, and a block. Uh, hey, can I answer that question now? Larry Joe. Yeah. <laughs> So Larry if he averaged Joe. 30 back then, you take Larry Joe. Larry Joe uh, <laughs> for the win. Skip, Reggie would take Bird over LeBron. Do you concur, my friend? Stephen A. Smith, 
I do concur. I do agree. In a hypothetical draft, that's what they started off with, I, I'll take it at any age. You, you can do it at 18 or 22 or 26, 28, or as they finally concluded at age 30. I'm going to take Larry Bird just a little bit over LeBron James. Now, you can argue, oh, LeBron is such a superior athlete, and I will not argue back. But as an all-around basketball player, as a leader, and especially as a clutch shooting difference maker, I'm all about Larry Bird. He was a bad boy. For those of us, the, the, those in the, the audience who are just too young to know, bad boy. Better shooter from LeBron at any distance. Three-point shooting, percentage, whatever you want to do, and especially from the free throw line where he often led the league in free throw percentage did Larry Bird. Better rebounder, clearly just a little bigger, uh, had a little more better knack under the basket for acquiring rebounds a la Dennis Rodman as a below the rim, six foot nine inch rebounder. I'll give LeBron a slight edge as an assist man, but only a slight edge because Larry Bird had the passing gift. And then we come to defense. I'll give LeBron a slight edge there, but Larry Bird, as you know, Stephen A could wreak havoc on defense to the point that he often led LeBron in the steals category. So I'm gonna give Larry a slight balancing edge there. Then we get to leadership, intangibles. They spilled over from Larry Bird, as you well know, because you're old enough to have covered him, which is why Larry Bird has three rings, lost two finals, no shame there, to Magic, Kareem, Worthy, Byron Scott, Michael Cooper, all the rest. Would I take him over LeBron James to start my my franchise? Yes, I would. And, and I don't think it's even close. Well, let me say this. Um, I think that LeBron James is a superior athlete. I think for the first 45 to 46 minutes of a game, I don't know if there's anybody in the world that you can pick over LeBron James because he's a freak of nature, a physical freak of nature being the fact that he's 6'8", 250 pounds, locomotive coming at you, capable of not just scoring but also defending and playing on both sides of the ball, uh, I got to give LeBron credit where credit is due in that regard. But there's no way on earth that I'd pick him over Larry Bird in the clutch. I can tell you that much. Larry Bird was not just a superior shooter from anywhere on the court, just like you highlighted. Not only was he a near 90% shooter from the free throw line, which LeBron could never brag about, but also, Larry Bird was Mr. Clutch. When the ball, when the game was on the line, you knew that the ball was going in Larry Bird's hands and there was little to nothing that you could do to stop him because he was that much of a marksman. A marksman of the highest order, one of the most lethal marksmen we've ever seen in the game's history. But the reason why I also feel the need to side with my man Reggie Miller is because when it, that, that intangible about winning it is something that LeBron James took years to learn, even though he deserves to be respected and that should not be held against him. What's undeniable, Skip, is that Larry Bird, whatever intangibles LeBron James strived to develop and ultimately did to some degree, but is still working on in terms of its completion, Larry Bird walked into the NBA with that attitude. He walked into the NBA with that gift. And there was an accountability factor that came with being on the floor with Larry Bird because there was a certain level of excellence that was expected and there was a certain you know, level of dereliction of duty that would not be tolerated. We've seen LeBron James tolerate a lot of things throughout the years, trying to fit in, trying to get along, trying to be that, you know, what he thought a leader was supposed to be. Larry Bird never paid any attention to any of that. He was Larry Bird. And he came in there with a level of greatness coming from Indiana State. And he put the basketball world on notice that he was going to be a legend and he was going to be a winner. And anybody that played with him had damn well better adopt that attitude or they were not going to be wearing the same uniform as him. That was Larry Bird. And, and, and we haven't seen that really from LeBron James, to be quite honest with you. So, you know, in terms of leadership, in terms of clutch, in terms of shooting ability, and overall championship credentials, not just trophies, but a mentality, Larry Bird gets the nod over LeBron James. But you still can't dismiss the greatness of LeBron James. I must admit, I am shocked that you're not defending LeBron a little harder because I anticipated I you would. I can't. No? 
money time, whether it's a particular juncture in the season where you're trying to position yourself for the playoffs, or you're talking about the last minutes of a game, or you're talking about the last shot in a game, or you're talking about a game seven, or you're talking about anything that, that indicates clutch. You simply can't pick LeBron over Larry Bird because you can pick almost no one in NBA history over Larry Bird because he was a marksman of the highest order. When it was money time, you knew where the ball was going and you also knew there was little to nothing that you could do about it. It was just a matter of whether or not Larry Bird was going to make it or miss it. It was not a matter of what he was going to put himself in position to do or what he was going to be capable of doing because he was that big time. He was Larry Bird. I have to, I can't deny that. We take a quick look at those stats, the age 30 stats between Larry Bird, LeBron James. Larry Bird has got him by three points in, in overall average scoring, th three rebounds a game he's got him by, which is pretty significant. Got him slightly in assists, which surprised me. He's not in Bird's league when it comes to passing the basket. And you got field goal percentage is substantial, 52.3 to 48.8. And then finally, that was another year. Larry Bird at 91% led the league in free throw percentage. When you look at the stats, what you also have to consider, Skip, is that Larry Bird deserves even more credit when you look at those numbers because the game was played considerably tougher then. It was more physical. You can get up in people. You know, you had the bad boys and everybody else still in the game and being very, very relevant. We all know the, bait, the game of professional basketball in the NBA is called soft as putty right now. You pass gas, you'll get called for a foul. Yep. You touch somebody's fingernails, you might get ejected. I agree. I mean, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. So the fact that back then it being so tougher and Larry Bird having the quality of teammates that he had and McHale and Dennis Johnson and others, to sit there and put up those kind of numbers is, a, is another testament to his greatness because he was playing in a time where they did not mind sharing the wealth. We know how unselfish he was about sharing the wealth. Flick it or tap it or bounce it to a teammate without even catching it. Bounce Bird. Nice tip to McHale. Pretty as you ever want to see. Pass to Bird. Behind the back to Perry. And yet he was still able to register those kind of numbers. So Larry Bird deserves a whole lot of credit for that. I agree with you. I I'm guessing that right now about 80% of our viewing audience does not agree with either one of us. Well, that, that, all that means is that they don't know anybody. They don't know. Because we, we, we're you. giving them facts. I would love to pick LeBron uh, if, if he deserved it, but I don't think he deserves it over Bird, over the Larry legend that we watched in terms of what I told you, those 45 minutes you know, an 82-game schedule, those, he deserves it in that level. But in terms of clutch, money time, there's no there's no contest. He's not even in Larry Bird's class. Let's all just agree that Bird's better. Bird's you better. Because it annoys LeBron fans. <laughs> As for shooting... Their overall field goal percentages are remarkably similar, but as we showed earlier, LeBron does the vast majority of his damage near the rim, where Larry was able to match the field goal percentage by taking many more shots from outside. <clears throat> Not to take anything away from, um, you know, LeBron's uh, physical, if not athletic ability, is a gift. Larry's IQ and basketball uh, competitiveness is, yeah. you know, un un uncanny. Like, Larry's ability to make tough shots. As for the outside shooting, this isn't really close. And the only reason his three-point numbers aren't gaudier is the simple fact that hardly any threes were taken back then, much less practiced. And yet Bird still shot over 40% five times, including two 50-40-90 seasons. Bird was consistently among the best free throw shooters each season, while LeBron's best year at the line was still six points lower than Bird's worst year. Interestingly, if you look at defensive win shares, Larry Bird actually ranks ahead of LeBron James by one spot. And that's because all of his basketball genius we saw on the offensive end translated to the defensive side of the ball as well. And when he was young and healthy, he made some plays that might 
just might remind you of some of the things we saw LeBron do. His quick hands allowed him to strip the ball, and in fact, he averaged the same amount of steals per game that LeBron does now. And that brings us to clutch performance, those moments when everyone in the building knows who's getting the ball, and as that clock winds down, do you have the clutch gene to nail the shot? While we don't have the advanced stats from Bird's era, we're going to have to use anecdotal evidence to show that time and again, the Celtics went to him in the waning seconds of the game, and it was a rare occasion when he didn't come through for them. At the very least, there was never ever a time when Bird was afraid to shoot the ball in those pressure situations. He would inevitably find some way to get open. Remember, they would hardly ever run a straight isolation out top and have him create off the dribble. Bird would flash open, find some sort of sliver of daylight, and get the jumper off. Again, these were moments when going to the basket wasn't preferable because the referees would definitely let the players decide these games. Foul calls were hard to come by. So it made more sense to do your best to get off a clean look from the outside. And Larry Bird was as good as anyone in this era with his knack for being in the right place at the right time, dropping in shots from all angles and degree of difficulty. LeBron's clutchiness is a bit more complicated. I criticize at times for not taking the game winning shot, even though I will defend him on some of these for making the right basketball play, something he's always been focused on doing to his credit. However, there have been a few times where he hasn't been the man down the stretch, and it has opened him up to quite a bit of criticism for not being that clutch player. Mark Stein wrote an article on ESPN.com about this, and with the help of advanced analytics and play-by-play -play data, we can quantify how LeBron has shot when attempting a tying or go-ahead shot in the final five seconds of the fourth quarter or overtime. As of March 1st of this year, he was a very mortal 5 for 47, or 10.6% over the past 10 seasons, whereas the league average on these shots is 22.7%. Can we even make a fair comparison of two players from completely different eras? While Bird was doing the mullet, LeBron was doing the headband. If you want to look at sheer ability to make plays while at the height of their careers, Larry definitely had more skill while LeBron brought more physical gifts. You can always defend Bird by saying he stuck with the team that drafted him, mm -hmm. won with the team that drafted him, which was a bad team when they drafted well, him. Well, the world was a little different then. Though. Stop with the excuses. Oh, right. Bird no, was, sure, right. I'm, yes. I'm helping you out here. Yeah. Bird didn't have to assemble a super team, a dream team. One area Larry was far superior in was his use of the left hand. There were sections of whole games where he'd only shoot with his offhand, and he had such control and touch with it, you'd never know exactly how to guard him once he got within 10 feet of the basket. I can't think of another player who used his ability to score with his offhand as often as Bird did, and even 25 years later, these are still the most impressive of his highlights, something LeBron cannot do. Miller, it was the push off on Michael Jordan, going over the left shoulder for three. It's there! Four tenths of a second! When the Pacers hit the shot, and Bird just sat there and did not move. The whole world is going crazy. They pan the camera to Larry Bird. He didn't even move. Standing there like he has ice water in his veins. Uh, so you know what I'm talking about. I'm, I, I, <laughs> what, what is that? It's, he's not even human. I, I, I've never seen anything like that in my life. He didn't even blink. Talk about calm under pressure, right? And that's the way he was as a player. He and doesn't even blink. I mean, did he, did he ever get excited? <laughs> did you ever hear him yell? Yes, he got excited. Absolutely. But we... We, we treated Larry Bird like E.F. Hutton. When he talked, people listened. Nah. He didn't say too much, but when he did, he had our attention. He's very private, but if he's your friend, man, you got a friend for life. And Larry Bird is a straight shooter. He'll tell you when he don't like you. That's one thing I wish I could have from him, that, that he has that I don't have. I wish I had that.
one of my pet peeves always is when people say, oh, Michael Jordan saved the NBA. Bullshit. Bullshit. Magic and Larry saved the NBA. That's who saved the NBA. Magic and Larry. Larry Bird said that there would be another Larry Bird one day. And Larry, there will never, ever, ever be another Larry Bird. I asked him one time, I said, what, what would it have been like if you had stayed on the sanitation truck? He said, Pete, hopefully I, I would have been bossed by now.